Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Another beautiful day here in Ohio. Uh, we had weather in the mid 40s or low 40s today, which is uh, unusual for us. I'll take it because uh, we heat with propane and propane is not cheap. Of course, I heat a little bit with firewood. I don't get to heat as much as I would like to, but that's more of my fault for not being more diligent. Anyways, when I'm out here on the property cutting firewood, I have found that I need several things with me to accomplish that task. And rather than just throwing things in the cab of the tractor in the bucket of the tractor, I decided to put together a chainsaw firewood kit. It, it helps me stay organized, helps me keep all my things in one spot that I need whenever I go cut firewood. Uh, and it helps me remember to take said items with me when I go cut firewood so I'm not running back to the shop. Either way, I need a way to stay organized and help me get done quicker. In other words, when I get ready to go saw, I would like a kit that I grab my oil and fuel and a chainsaw or two. Typically, I take two chainsaws with me. That way I don't have to sharpen chains in case something happens. Plus, I just like to run them. So what I found here recently when I'm cutting firewood is it's, it's always a pain. I, I grab several things. I throw them in the cab of the tractor in the bucket. And then when I get to where I'm going, I got to unload all that stuff. There's not a lot of room in the cab of that tractor. There is, but not really. I mean, if you had a coat on and you took your coat off, that's about as much room as you have left is for a spare coat. So you throw a pair of chaps in there and things start really getting crowded. Oh, and then at the end of the day, when you're done cutting firewood and you're gonna put all your stuff away, well, now I'm making several trips from the tractor to the shop to get everything out of the tractor. You guys get where I'm going with this. I need a convenient way to store my gear, something to keep it in that's tough and that I can just take the gear to wherever I'm cutting and set it off to the side and not worry about it. So I wanna show you the kit I'm putting together and then we'll, we'll talk about what's in it. Let's take a, let's take a closer look. Alright guys, so this is what I've come up with so far. Uh, I'm not sure if there's some things I need to add to this. And if you guys want, comment down below as I, you, as I go through this. If there's things you think that I should add to this kit. Uh, let me know what you guys carry. And then also let me know what you guys do in your situation. I have seen other similar things. Some guys carry some stuff in buckets. Uh, other guys have uh, fallers belts or whatever. But... This is what I've come up with so far, and I'm digging it. So let's start with the case. This this is the brand new DeWalt Tough Systems 2.0, and what I thought was is that a sticker. What I thought was weird. Yeah, it is a sticker. Anyways, <clears throat> what I thought is weird is there are a lot of videos, video reviews on these cases. But nobody's really showing how they're using them. I get they're for cordless tools and, and carpentry tools or whatever. But I think there's so much more potential with these cases than what people realize. And I think there's a very big misunderstanding of what a value this, this case is. This thing's really impressive. It's First off, it, it is tough. And it reminds me of a Pelican case. Now, I don't know if it's as tough as a Pelican case. I really don't have any Pelican cases to compare it to. I have seen Pelican cases and dealt with them in the military. But this thing's tough, I'm telling you. For the money, I think this was, it was 60 or 70 bucks for this particular unit here. And it's their mid-range, I think. I don't know. What is, is it off of the? 21 inch 21 inches wide by 12 inches tall by we'll say 14 14 inches deep but they sell three different sizes basically 
uh, the bottom with the rollers, this one, and then there's a the top piece. So I thought that this was actually a really good size for what I'm doing because it's not so big. It's not going to fit in the bucket of the tractor and it's easy to manipulate. It's not hard at all. It's got nice handles on the side. It's got a nice top handle. Like I said, it's super tough. If you put these together, they, they automatically lock together with these really nice clips on the sides. This center clip, I think, is for some other additional add-ons. I don't know. Uh, this isn't a video about DeWalt's Tough Systems, but I will say this is a nice unit. Very heavy-duty latches. And it's got some waterproofness to it as well. It's It's got a rubber gasket around the lid that uh, will keep all the the rain and wet stuff out of your box and it's really perfect for this so anyways let's dig into what what I've put together in this kit what I think I need and then I'll talk about a few things that I'd like to add here in the, the future to uh, round this kit out a little bit so it does have this nice removable tray so we'll just I guess we'll just take that out and talk about what's in that real quick. So everybody needs a good set of wedges. I have a couple different sizes. Um, I need to I need to get a couple more of the bigger ones. These little ones are okay for small stuff, especially if, what I like them for is bucking firewood. If you're bucking a piece of firewood and your bar gets stuck, of course you can't see those. But your bar gets stuck, you can set those little ones in the, the cut, pound them down with your axe, and help get your bar out. The bigger ones, obviously, for falling. I did put a couple scrunches in here, even though there's one on my fuel can. Uh, one's a spare, and then the other one has the, the Torx bit that fits the steel chainsaws. So, in case I need to sharpen, or uh, sharpen, in case I need to tighten up a, a Torx bit, on one of my ch steel chainsaws, I, I have that capabilities. Uh, a cheap moisture meter. That's more of a for after words, but I, I don't know. Sometimes I do like to check the moisture content of the firewood when I cut it. And maybe if it's pretty dry, I'll stack it in a different pile knowing I'm going to burn it sooner. I just threw a little rag in there. A tape measure. I'm going to swap this out for an, an actual um, timber or loggers tape measure. I, I just haven't got my hands on one. No one around me sells them. And then the ones on Amazon are always out of stock. I, ha I do see them on eBay though. So I just need to go pull the trigger on eBay and, and buy one of those. Because that's not really that great for measuring logs. And then... A pair of earplugs. Guys get on me a lot about hearing protection in my videos. Most of the time I'm wearing them, but you can't see them because they're just little earplugs. But I prefer earplugs. So, get into the main section here. Um, I do have a first aid kit. When I'm here on the property cutting firewood, I am typically by myself. So, I do try to take precautions. With that being said, I still like to have... A major major trauma first aid kit I just have a couple things in here and it, this is basically to stop bleeding um, I did throw a couple little band-aids in there from time to time you get little slivers or whatever it's nice to throw a band-aid on there stop the bleeding or whatever uh, but I do have um, a tourniquet and I do have a couple they're like Israeli bandages, but not quite. But they're made to stop bleeding, basically. And, and in my mind, that's that's what you need for a chainsaw kit. Let's let's be honest. If you're uh, if you're going to have an injury with a chainsaw, it's going to be significant, and you're going to want to stop the bleeding. So the hope is this is enough to buy me time to get out of the woods and get medical help if it ever rises i hope it never does I, I try to be extra careful i don't take a lot of risk i'm still very green at cutting firewood or cutting trees down and i i, 
I respect the saws and the the fact that I don't have the experience that some people do cutting. So this is added insurance for me. Um, I do know how to use those medical devices, uh, such as the tourniquet and the bandages. I do have some first aid training. Uh, I, I recommend if you're going to carry something like that, you understand how it works, get some training, and obviously practice putting it on because in practice with one hand because you never know so that's enough of that I do have a helmet I have several helmets actually uh, this is just the one that is in here right now it's the most comfortable bought a really cool metal one of these in old style but the the, the headband is it's the most uncomfortable thing on this planet um of course a pair of chaps these are uh, steel chaps. They're not the latest and greatest wrap, full wrap around steel chaps, but they are a pair of steel chaps. Uh, I wouldn't mind having the wrap around ones for a little bit of added protection, but when I went to buy those, the dealer did not have the full wraps. They just had those. I have several pair of gloves in here. Um, these are my three favorite types of gloves. In the summer and spring, fall, I, I really like these lightweight uh, nitro gloves, nitro coated gloves. It's like a cotton back with, with or nylon, nylon, nylon back with uh, nitro coating on there. Uh, it really gives you really good uh, dexterity and it, this, this nitro grips really good. Uh, they're, they're excellent firewood gloves. They don't seem to wear out very fast <clears throat> and they're not super heavy or cumbersome so i do i do like those for warmer temperatures when it starts cooling off right now these are my favorite gloves in all the world <laughs> i don't know why i just love these gloves they're they're a uh, like a cotton canvas like our heavy cotton almost insulated uh, they keep you somewhat warm. The only downside to these gloves, and it's a big one, is once they get wet, they are wet. So it's not a bad idea to carry a couple pairs of these, and they're cheap too. Like I think a dozen of these is like $12. I'll put a link in my uh, description below, uh, an affiliate link for Ed's, or Amazon where I buy them. And uh, you could pick up yourself a, a, a dozen of them for I, I want to say it's like $12 or something. Or maybe it's $21 for a dozen. I don't know. It's one of those two. But the other thing I really like about these gloves is you can wash them. So if they get grody, or in my case where I'm dealing with a lot of poison ivy out here, if, if I touch poison ivy with these, I don't just have to throw them away. I can throw them in the wash and, and get the poison ivy oil off of them. That's the one downside about leather is... If you touch touch poison ivy with it, you got to be extra careful not to touch your skin. But I do love these gloves. Now, I don't know how well they hold up with firewood yet because I haven't worked with them enough to really give you guys a good idea. But uh, so far, for I have several pairs of these going at once, too, so it's hard to, hard to judge how they're wearing because as soon as a pair gets wet, I just grab another pair. And I've got them everywhere. I've got them... In all my cars, <laughs> there's a spare pair in the tractor. There's there's a spare pair um, in the garage at all times. And I'm always rocking a pair of those gloves out. I, I just love them. Plus, they're green. Come on. How can you go wrong? So, uh, last, last on gloves. These are a pair of heavy-duty leather work gloves. They're really nice. Uh, Roper style, heavy-duty gloves. Uh, pull strap here with leather uh, these were a f fire service glove i bought them at a fire service supply but i don't remember where i wish i, should, I need to go figure that out because i should probably buy a second pair for a backup but i like to buy if i find something i like i like to get several more of that item i like because someday they're going to wear out and then you're not going to be able to get them again so because they seem to uh, 
They don't seem to improve gloves. They seem to just make them cheaper and charge you more. Anyways, enough about gloves. Um, this is something unique to me. A lot of you guys are going to laugh at this, but anybody guess what I use this for? <laughs> so this is a chunk of uh, one by material. One by one or something like that. And just, it doesn't even matter. But what matters is, is this is 16 inches long. So what I like to do is set this down on my log and just grab some sort of spray paint and uh, put a line on the log. And I'll just run down the log and keep making lines. And then I go back and cut it. I'm not good at judging the length of my firewood. I don't really, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't sell my firewood. It's all for personal consumption. But I do like the looks of a nice, neat, stacked uh, firewood pile. And if I didn't mark these, I'd get rampant. It, it would range from 10-inch pieces to 20-inch pieces <laughs> real quick. Because I just, I have a hard time judging that 16 inches. So until I get better at it, this is a, this is a little crutch I use. Uh, everybody's got their own little technique. I've seen bar, uh, things on the ends of bars that, that go off to the side, measure out 16 inches. Um, I do have some of my bars marked at 16 inches. So there, there's lots of ways to do it. That's just one way that I do it. And I find that to be real quick. It doesn't take me any time at all to just uh, quickly go mark my my log and cut it up. So, And then the last thing I got in my uh, little firewood kit are these chainsaw sharpeners by steel. Um, I can't remember what... What they call them but anyways i i've made videos on these i i really like these it's for me i have found it is the quickest uh, easiest way for me to get a sharp chain uh i can i have been practicing hand filing but it, it i don't get it perfect and that's a, an art like that takes a lot of practice and a lot of patience so someday i'll probably get good at it but for now i'm not so I use this. This is quick for me. I have noticed there is a technique to using these. It's not as simple as uh, what they portray in the videos. But if you put too much downward pressure on this, it will take too much off your rakers and then your chain is going to be way too aggressive. So you have to put not much pressure on your chain at all when you're using this uh, sharpening system. And it works perfectly. Uh, I, d I have three different sizes because I have three different size chains that I could run. Most of the time I run 3 8 But I also have a 3 8 plus P. Is that what that is? Or 3 8 P for my little top handle. And then I do have 404 on my 880 steel. And steel does not make the, the sharpener for the 404. You have to go with the preferred... Ferd, Ferd brand. Uh, good, good quality files in these. these I, I, those are good files if you ever need a file. Ferds are good files. But those are the three that I need for my uh, the chains that I use. So, but that is pretty much my kit. A couple things are going to add uh, eventually. Like I said, I want to replace that tape measure with a logger's tape measure. I want to probably, <clears throat> I need to go through my fleet of chainsaws and figure out what spark plugs every chainsaw takes and have at least one or two spares of all those chainsaws in my kit. Uh, spare, park, sp spare spark plugs are not a bad idea. But then again, I carry two chainsaws and the chances of fouling two plugs in the same day are slim and none. <laughs> Never say never, though. But I'll, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have those in there. And then I probably should throw a couple of spare chains in this box as well. I I typically don't like to change chains while I'm out cutting wood. I'd rather just grab another saw. But it, it's not a bad idea to have a spare chain with you. And it's not always convenient for me to grab two saws. So I'll, I'll probably throw some spare chains in this kit as well and i thought there was something else 
that I thought was going to put in here, but I think that pretty much rounds it up, wraps or rounds out this kit to give me a pretty good advantage when I'm out uh, sawing up firewood. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little uh, spiel about my chainsaw firewood kit. And then, like I said before, if you got some ideas or want to tell me about your kits or what you use, just type in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Make a video and tag me. Let me know if you make a video. Get a hold of me. Have your people call my people. I'd love to see your video. Anyways, <laughs> I'm just rambling. But I'm going to... I'm going to put all this stuff back together and hopefully we'll be cutting firewood soon. Uh, I don't know. I want to uh, start working on the shop. I'm going to fix this wall here soon. Uh, by me fix it, I mean I'm going to insulate it and put a covering on it. <laughs> I need one wall in here started. That'll get me motivated to get more going. So. If I could get one wall finished, I think you guys will be uh, happy to see what kind of finish I'm going to do on the walls. But I think if I could get one wall finished, it'll motivate me to do more. So that's my next goal is to work on this wall. Plus, this wall is lace cluttered, so I could get all this stuff away from the wall, get it done, and then get it put back together the way it's going to be, and then start hanging some stuff. I got ideas. I got ideas. I got an idea for over here. I got an idea for over there. I got an idea for here. You guys get the picture. All right. Till next video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.